name? My name is Fox. Jesse Fox. You don't seem to be Russian. Russian? Me? You were piloting a Russian aircraft two hours ago. I also drive a Toyota, and I'm not Japanese. A heads up, we have got some awesome reviews for you coming up this week, so make sure you don't miss them. Hit that silly little notification bell wherever it is. Is it bottom right? I don't know. Down there somewhere. It's been too long since we had a Metal Gear Solid game. It doesn't matter what platform you're on. From its original inception back in 1987 on the MSX home computer to one of my childhood favourites in 1998 with Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation, all the way up to the more recent Metal Gear Survive in 2018. Unmetal's Metal Gear Solid, if it was written by the writers of Hot Shots Part 2, which is to say, it's absolutely bloody hilarious. But is it any good? Well, a thanks to the publisher for the review copy. Let's find out. It's not that hard. You just have to mix the ingredients correctly. Unmetal is from the same creator that brought us Unepic and Ghost 1.0. The latter of those is a hugely underrated title that's also available on the Nintendo Switch. It's a self-professed homage to early Metal Gear Solid games and parodies 80s movies. The story surrounds Jesse Fox who finds himself imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit. As you'll hear so often, as to become absurd, ludicrous and one of the funniest jokes in the game. Soon, the sewers are completely infested with mutant killer squirrels. It was horrible. Felt like I was a giant acorn. Assisting Jesse in his escape are a few side characters, from an MIA general to a particularly attractive doctor. And yes, you'll remain in communication with them through your trusty radios. Unmetal is narrated by Jesse himself as he's interrogated by an officer and as such plays out as a series of flashbacks. Often the action's interrupted by a piece of dialogue from the interrogator and rather than being an irritation, as this definitely could have been, some of the best writing comes in these moments. To chill out, pulling out glass eyes relaxes you? I'm not a sadist. I didn't enjoy pulling it out, but it helped when I rolled it around in my mouth like candy. And it's rare that I'm sat on my own laughing as much as I did here. As far as the gameplay and controls then, well, it does play out like an early 90s action game with those stealth elements draped over the top, but it also has other aspects from different titles. For example, in your inventory, you can gather different items and sometimes you'll need to combine these. You might need to make an improvised weapon or a rope with a hook to allow you to descend to the next level. Jesse's movement's controlled with the stick. There's no run button. However, when there are no other enemies on the screen, he will automatically sprint. Otherwise, he's creeping around. When against a box or flat surface, Surface, he'll press his back and you have a few options. You could toss a coin onto the ground to distract a nearby guard and then take them out when they're close enough or create a sound distraction by banging against the surface. Enemies can be incapacitated but you won't be killing them because after all he's not an assassin. However later in the game this is brought home even more when you have to collect extra medical kits because if you do shoot someone you have to then treat their wounds before they die. <laughs> You can also lift up bodies and carry them away by double tapping the B button. Unfortunately, it's the same one that's assigned to punch, and there were a couple of occasions where I ended up lifting someone up rather than punching the latest enemy to turn up. What's very cool is you're not punished if you fail the stealth, however, you aren't given XP for that kill, and you'll need to stay out of the way of the pursuing guards for a set amount of time shown over here. Often you'll bump into them having conversations between each other, and even occasionally it will interrupt the normal flow of gameplay, such as this moment where I tossed a coin and things didn't quite play out as usual. Uh, right? Yeah, why not? Come on, Mike, it's the oldest trick ever. The stages are quite varied and there are a number of boss fights, and Unmetal is not an easy game. You can save your progress at a urinal, but you can also find plastic potties from destroying toilets, and you can urinate in those to temporarily save wherever you are, however you'll then need to empty the urine at the next toilet you find. I know, awesome isn't it? It's quite interesting reading the comments of the developer, and I can feel a certain affinity with him when he says that he's trying to recreate the early joys he experienced playing games, and I think the highest compliment I could level Unmetal is that that's exactly how it feels as an older gamer. While on its surface it seems to use so many mechanics you may be familiar with, it constantly surprises the player while still maintaining tight gameplay mechanics. Whenever you level up, you're given the option between two different choices. It's a nice simple system and it doesn't interrupt the flow of the game. Each stage has a number of hidden items to find and aside from several different difficulty modes, which you can choose at the start, there are also times where you're given a choice which will directly impact 
how the game plays out. But she had yet to find out that she was actually fertilized with piranha sperm. As the whole thing is a flashback of memories, sometimes Jesse may elaborate slightly and you get to choose what happens. It might be a boss fight where you're telling how many tentacles it had and you never really know what you're gonna get. You could choose less and actually end up with more. And I love how the writing of Jesse constantly exposes how ludicrous computer games really can be. Beat the shit out of him. Is that a joke? No, I literally beat the shit out of him. That toilet paper wasn't unscented anymore. Let's move on. There's an element of tinkering here where you can combine those items to create different weapons, and despite a couple of quirky control moments and some savage difficulty spikes, story and gameplay are brilliant and score 19 out of 20. Controls aren't quite up to the same standard, but you can remap every button, and there are some options for adding shortcuts as well. Controls score 16 out of 20. I wouldn't say Unmetal is the most pretty of games. Certainly its aesthetic choices match the inspirations, but visuals are probably its weakest element. That's not to say I don't like them, they just aren't standout. There's lots of assets recycled, and a few of the environments are quite bland. They're absolutely in keeping with the intent of the designers, and there are a couple of excellent flurries in there, and performance remains consistent in docked and handheld, and text size isn't an issue. But it's the audio where Unmetal excels, chiefly the dialogue. Every character is voice acted excellently. It's not that hard. You just have to mix the ingredients correctly even down to the grunts. When you combine that with how well written they are, I can honestly say that once again, we have a game that's not like anything else on Switch and which shines as another example of the passion that indie developers seem to be harnessing at the moment. There are so many little details here from an audio standpoint. The musical tracks are very reminiscent to the inspirations and you'll hear some sound effects in there that feel very familiar. Son, do you copy? Overall, I give visuals and performance 14 out of 20, and the audio scores 19 out of 20. Soon, the sewers are coming. Unmetal will set you back £17.99 or your regional equivalent. It's an absolute blast and constantly surprises, while also feeling familiar in the best possible ways. Playing on the normal difficulty, it's certainly challenging, but it never feels unfair. However, the price £17.99 does put it at the top end when it comes to smaller indie releases, but I would not be complaining if I paid full price. I'm really excited to see some of your comments down below about how much you're enjoying it. Still, with that price, I'm going to give value 16 out of 20. Jesse Fox is a man of action. Just it wasn't until I saw who was developing this game that I got excited about it, and for good reason. It's absolutely brilliant, it's hilarious, and I feel like a kid again playing Metal Gear Solid, except with Charlie Sheen as the lead actor. It scores a switch up score of 84%. A thanks to the publisher for the review copy. Do let me know down in the comments if you're going to be picking this one up, and as you can probably hear, it's just nice to be playing a game like this. The Switch really is the king of indie releases. Thanks to all of you that enjoy the content, if you do, please consider sticking around if you haven't already stuck hit all the bells and whistles and all that stuff and as always a big thanks to our patrons you guys are amazing and for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya here you are colonel radio i've modified it to encrypt the signal wise man once said with a little bit of imagination anything is possible Jesse Fox is the ultimate non-hero that we deserve. Hiya. You stole a one-eyed man's patch? What you did was macabre and suggest you might have a fetish. Pet the doggy? <laughs> the sewer was infested with assassin rats. Felt like I was a huge chunk of cheese. Bless you. Fox, what are you waiting for? We are running out of time.